section. It says millennials want to retire at 50. How to afford it is another matter. Dreams of stopping work or doing only fulfilling work 15 years before their parents did are colliding with the realities of amassing enough money to do so. All right. So they had a whole bunch of comments on here too. 353 comments. So this is the lady right here. I think she is a doctor. All right. So this is what she says. She says, I want to get to, to a point where I don't have to work for money anymore. And I can work for pleasure. So Devangi, I believe that's how you pronounce her, Devangi Patel. She's 33, a cardi cardiothoracic, <laughs> thoracic, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Anesthesio anesthesiologist, so she works with the heart. And she is in the Atlanta area. All right, so let's go ahead and read part of this article right quick. So it says by Lisa Roping. This is this one came out in September 24th of this year, 2022. So it says, although Devangi Patel is 33, she has been working as a cardiothoracic, <laughs> cardiothoracic, I don't know how to pronounce it, anesthesiologist at a large medical center outside Atlanta for only two years. Her goal is to afford to walk away from her job at 50. That to me is the American dream, she said. Dr. Patel is not alone in her quest to become financially independent and at a relatively early age. It seems that a generational shift is well underway. Many millennial workers don't aspire to retire in their mid or late sixties, like their parents. Instead, many with professional careers are seeking to leave their jobs by 50 and work for themselves or take a lower paying role that is more aligned with their interests. Studies are showing and financial advisors are finding. All right. So let me go ahead and give a huge shout out to the super chats I see up in the chat. Thank you so much. Christian Hutchinson says women getting down payment assistance to buy homes. The down payment is a second loan, 2% higher than the senior loan works in lower neighborhoods. That is, that's a good point, Christian. I have to look into that though, too. That could be a whole nother topic. Gail and I says women file for divorce more than men and more times than not. Men are made to pay child support, custody, and lose the house to the ex-wife, etc. Even if she was wrong. So that's another thing. Are our, our, our men having a harder time being able to qualify for a home loan because, well, obviously because of their divorce, right? I, I believe that it depends on your age as well. Like if you get married and then divorced early on in age, that means that you don't really have as much money for them to split between uh, the, the two divorcees, right? You don't have to split too much between the spouses. And, but when you get older, like probably like, let's say if you're 45, shout out to the lead attorney, he says, Think of it as splitting your age in half, right? Imagine that. Imagine splitting your age in half. I'm like, I just would not want to, would not want to do it. You're going to be sitting up here at 45 and then now your income goes from 45 year old level down to 23 or 22, 23 year old level, right? Fresh out of college type of level. I like all these, but that's not to say that you can't get it back. Of course, there's 
plenty of men who get divorced and then can get it back. But uh, that's the whole thing is that true confidence is saying I could lose everything today and I can get it back and then some. Not because of the money, but because of who I am inside. That is why I strive to be successful. Thank you so much. Good to afford it is another matter. Let's go ahead and read some of these comments before we get into the next topic. So this is from uh, Lindsay in, in Los Angeles, California. Very expensive place to live. It says, who could recognize capital as a tool we can use and control and organize our lives around doing meaningful work that benefits us around in the world. We could have an economic system based on reason instead of a casino that rewards lying psychopaths. Societies have done this in the past. We could do it again. All right. So uh, the reason I uh, highlighted this one is because she lives in a extremely expensive place to live. It, I think, isn't it like Los Angeles and South and uh, San Francisco or like some of the most expensive cities to live in, in the world. Right. And I find this to be true for a, a lot of people that I have spoken to who live in California that even though things are extremely expensive, they usually have like this mindset of, Oh, money isn't everything. Uh, I meet a lot of people who don't have jobs and stuff like that. Like, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, how do you live in California? You don't have no job. Like where, where does the money come? How do you survive? You see a lot of homeless people and especially in Los Angeles, you see a lot of homeless people living in their cars. Uh, shout out to, uh, shout out to, what, is, uh, what, what, I forgot her name. Dr. Dre's daughter. Forgot her, forgot her name. Dr. Dre's daughter was homeless living in South in, in Los Angeles, living in her car, despite her dad having a whole bunch of money. So she'd be another example, but you see a lot of homeless people. Uh, and then also people who are just trying to get by living with family members, stuff like that. Uh, they have a huge homeless problem in Los Angeles as well, even to the point where they have a whole a video uh, essay or a documentary that is talking about how Los Angeles is making so much money off of the homeless in that area uh, through construction of it's like, I forgot the, the exact word, the naming of it, but it's like strategically building architecture that is uncomfortable for homeless people to sleep on. Like they have benches that are like weird and may have spikes and stuff like that. That's it's not like actual like pointy spikes, but it's like spikes that would make it uncomfortable to lay on. Like you can sit on it, but laying on it will be pretty weird. And they have stuff that is designed to make people not want to sleep in a specific area. Uh, there is a lot of crime in Los Angeles as well because of this. So to see somebody say this makes no sense. They're like, oh, you know, just have everything not based off of money, but based off of reasons. And in, if anybody is doing well, that means they must be a lying psychopath, right? They must be being rewarded by this system if they are lying psychopath. All right, so let's continue on to the next one. It says, if you want to retire at 50, you should work for the state government in a blue state, okay? So now running right politics. All right. So blue state being a uh, liberal state. I have friends who worked for the state of California for a long enough to qualify for a full pension and then quit and started a new business. I don't fault them for taking advantage of the system, even though it angers me greatly that my tax Taxes finance early retirement for thousands. Meanwhile, everyone else who works until 65 keeps voting for the corrupt politicians 
that keep providing more and more benefits to state workers thanks to public employee unions, lobbying, and campaign contributions. Hmm. So he says, work in a blue state, but then he also then calls them corrupt politicians. I guess it didn't matter what state you're in. Uh, politicians can be corrupt. Apparently, not all blue states are created equal. And my blue state government employees have to wait way past 50 to collect a pension. Or perhaps your friends sever, uh, served state employment at 50 which enabled them to collect a lump sum much smaller than taking the annualized pension at age 50, 65, and then started their own business to make up for the shortfall in income until age 65 and Medicare kicked in and age 67 when Social Security kicks in. Nevertheless, they got nothing like a free ride, still have to work in their pre-golden years, whatever floats. All right, and then I didn't know that uh, the Social Security kicks in at 67, but then we're not gonna get it anyway, so you know I ain't worried about I ain't worried about Social Security. All right, so I got this last comment right here. I'm gonna read. They're in uh, Albany, Oregon, I believe that's what O R is. <laughs> Hate to say it like that. All right, so uh, I have been a self-employed psychologist for nearly 20 years following a couple positions in university settings. In the first 13 years of my career, I spent too many years in grad school and did not start working full-time until my mid-30s. Plus, I was the butt of many jokes by my friends and family for being the perennial student. Ooh, that's another word right there. The perennial, what does perennial stand for? Lasting or existing for a long or apparently infinite time, enduring or continually recurring. That's interesting. So they were a student for a long time. Oh, because they were psychologists. Okay, that makes sense. I want to point out how criminal it was once I reached my 60s to carry my own health insurance. I had to budget between 15 to 20K a year to cover my monthly premiums and essentially pay all of my medical bills as well, given the very high annual deductibles, which I rarely met. This made it very difficult to put money away for retirement savings. I am still working at 68. Ooh, go, imagine going through all, oh my gosh. Imagine going through all of that school to where you can call yourself a perennial a perennial student, right? Shout out to Tommy. He says, the never ending student. All right, you know what? That's what I always say. We should always be students. We should always be learning. Uh, you should never stop learning. When you stop learning, that means you start dying. That's usually what that means, right? You're supposed to be learning something new uh, very, uh, uh, every day. All right, so it says, I'm still working at 68, but I have only been working half time since I turned 65 and became Medicare eligible. This reduced my monthly health insurance and medical costs by more than 80%. Being semi-retired for the past few years has been great, and I still love my work. Always have. I get a three or four day weekend every week, and I take anywhere from four to eight weeks a year of vacation. That's pretty good. Most people can't even do that. Four to eight weeks of vacation. I have long aspired to the European standard of having at least 67 weeks of vacation each year, and I have made it. As others have commented, we need to pressure Congress to raise the income cap for collecting Social Security taxes. Hey, I am not waiting on that. I need to get my money before. I need I need to be successful. Before, I'm before the billions. Y'all already know. Y'all know what that means, before the billions, right? 
All right, I need to get to the billions. Even raising the cap to 250K annual salaries would ensure funding for the program. We just have to, we just have too many Republicans in power who still want to dismantle the entire system. All right, so that's the last comment I'm going to read on this. Uh, I will have uh, these articles put up in the description as well.